What's up? <laughs> I love y'all. Sunrise Day. Hey, that's that's the baby with the shirts. Go to our website. You can order these shirts. Yeah, she created these. Good morning, Your Grace Bishop Murphy. God bless you. Wow, the Dream Center retooling for revival. Holy Ghost outpourings retooling. Glory to God for reformation of the church. Reformation of the church. My God. Woo! Glory to God. Bridget Horton, good morning. Yes, yes. Thank God. Made it back safely from Atlanta. Out again tonight. God, is this is my season. Y'all saw it on my post. My season of grace and favor. My season to reap what I have sown. To see the outbreak of Holy Spirit all over the land. <laughs> Do y'all understand what that means? Wow, that is so powerful. To see the outbreak of Holy Spirit throughout the land. That thrills my heart. Uh, we saw something the other day on Family Feud, right? So John Andrew Hart shared it with me so family had won and they were going to fast what is it the fast money what yeah y'all know the round and uh the, yeah, the family's the holy ghost pentecostals right <laughs> so the girl gets up and she starts saying holy 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 ghost activate holy spirit activate holy ghost activate this on family few so steve harvey Y'all can, y'all can, uh, I'll put it on my page. So Steve Harvey goes, well, that's never happened before. <laughs> I, I was so tickled. I can't make this stuff up. Listen, let me just say this to us. This school of Holy Spirit is no joke. This is not, listen, I'm not running for popularity contests. I'm going the distance with this. Good morning, Samantha. Five, five. Come on. God bless you. Happy birthday, Pastor Janine. God bless you. God bless you. Happy 5-5. Five, five. That's Pentecost twice. <laughs> you better speak in tongues all day today. <laughs> Bea Wilkins. Come on. God bless you. Wilson. Come on, Juanita Campbell. Yes. Come on. Come on. Holy Ghost activate. Holy Ghost activate. Holy Ghost activate. And, and Steve Harvey says, well, that's never happened before. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, if I can get him baptized in the Holy Ghost. What what an outpouring that would be. That, and that's where we're going, folks. That's what's happening. And so I I am just I'm thrilled at what Holy Spirit is doing. You know, that's a William Murphy song. This is my season of grace and favor. Yes, this is my season to reap what I have sown. <laughs> I have not always been perfect, but I've been faithful. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Whoa, glory to God. And this, this thing, yes, retooling for reformation. Come on, Valerie, the dream center. Yes, retooling until every believer is operating at full warp speed in Pentecostal power. That's, that's the goal of this is not for you to, you know, for me, it's for me, the assignment is to retool the church, to reform the church, to have us to revisit Pentecost in a new and a refreshing way. Good morning, Gail Artis. Good morning, Odington. Good morning. It, that, that's what my assignment is in this season. Good morning, Marilyn, Mary Milton Spencer coming up the timeline. Let's go. Praise God. Hallelujah. Jamelia Lanier. Yes, yes, yes. It's my season. <laughs> Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. That's the power of Holy Spirit. Quintana Howell. Good morning. Leola Rucker, come on in, Charlotte Poole, yes, yes, School of Holy Spirit is no joke, Kimberly, 
Hallelujah, Lillian. This is not about me. Maria James, Minnie Bradford, amen. Tanya Shelton, anyone that is, that is attached to me in this season, we have one assignment to get his church to Pentecost. We have one assignment. Everything that's attached to me, Juanisha Swain, glory to God. I'm so glad you're here, baby. Maria James, yes. Jamelia, thank you for being an official sharer. Glory, glory. Whoa, yes, God, to get his church to Pentecost. And he was very clear, get my church to Pentecost. Get my church back to working miracles. Get my church back to prophecy. Get my church to Pentecost. Get them moving in the power of my spirit again. Whoa, God, I'm telling you something. <clears throat> That's all I'm doing. Amen. I'm not trying to build no big reformation unless you want to talk about the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Glory to God. I believe whatever I connect to, then I'm connecting to it. Anything that's connecting to me, you need to be connecting to me because you want to get to Pentecost. Ah, glory to God. I'm not playing church games. I'm not playing organizational games. Glory to God. I can come in and train your people, train the body, train the leaders how to move in Holy Spirit's power. I want to deposit this. Lord said to me, you got 30 years to finish the work. You got 30 years to do this. Glory to God. And, and some of that time is already gone. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Come on, Sister Early Becton. Come on, Sister E. Teresa Moss. This class is, we're not playing here. I'm empowering you. I'm empowering bishops and apostles and prophets to move this move. Let's move it. Let's be serious and persuaded and convinced about it. Glory to God. Whoa, good morning, Sister Gloria G. God bless you, sissy. Hallelujah. That's what we're doing. Hillary Ann Gardner, that's what we're doing. That's what I'm doing. I'm depositing Pentecostal power in the population of God's people. Glory to God. God, in the name of Jesus, from leadership to fellowship, from fellowship to community, from community, glory to God, to government, from government to education, until the whole earth is filled with his glory, the knowledge of the glory of the Lord, glory to God, hallelujah, shall overtake us like the waters cover the sea, shall cover the earth as the waters cover the sea. Woo, glory to God, hallelujah, hallelujah. Somebody type in there, I'm in, I'm in. If you in, put it in there, I'm in, I'm in, come on, I'm in. You want something else, amen, praise God. But if that's what you want, you want to see a move of Holy Spirit, then I'm in. Come on, suck. Say, I'm all in. I'm, I love that song. I'm all in. I'm in. Put it in your put it in the in the in the in the text. I'm in. If that's what you're here for, if that's what you're believing for, whoa, glory to God. I'm in. Put it in there. I'm in. I'm in. I'm all in. I'm all in. Dr. Bradford said, I'm all in. The reformation of denominations, the reformation, glory to God, of the Baptist church, the reformation, glory to God, of the Pentecostal church, the reformation, hallelujah, of the Methodist church, of the holiness church, five baptized, all of us need another outpouring of Holy Spirit, psalmists, musicians, glory to God, worship teams, choirs, Whoa, glory, glory, glory. This is global. This is not uh, indigenous to a denomination or indigenous to an organization. This is Pentecost. 
and I will pour out my spirit. Put it in there. I'm in. <laughs> Woo, I'm in. Come on, Barbara Samuel. <laughs> Glory to God. I'm in. I'm in. I'm all in. You're tired of dead church. <laughs> Y'all coming with all these ways to try to get people in the seats. Let me tell you, miracles, signs, and wonders. Woo, glory. Miracles, signs, and wonders. Church growth. I'm going to give you the secret to church growth. Miracles, signs, and wonders intergenerational growth takes place miracles signs and wonders children want to see miracles that's why they watch cartoons <laughs> hallelujah teenagers glory to god that's why they watch uh these comic strip movies because of the animation of it Ha we want to see the supernatural Whoa, glory to God. Ah, millennials want to see blind eyes open. They want to see people healed. Miracles, signs, and wonders. Ah, glory to God. The baby boomers, glory. And the beyond baby boomers. All of us want to see miracles, signs, and wonders. Put it in there if you're in. I'm in. Put it in there. I'm in. <laughs> I'm all in. <laughs> Whatever it takes, I'm all in. Woo, glory to God. You all know that I started the fast of uh, the month of September. Praise God. And the Holy Spirit said to me, <laughs> all right, <laughs> what, what do you want? I said, I want more. All right. <laughs> Hallelujah. What you do, October? I said, yes, Lord. I, you don't even have to ask me. I already have decided. Whoa, this kind of precision in the spirit. Glory to God. This type of this type of energy, this type of movement and motion requires a sacrifice, requires a price, a cause. There's a consecration that goes with this. Yeah, I'm all in. <laughs> Glory to God. I'm all in. I'm all in. Hallelujah, I'm all in. Glory to God, I'm all in. Whatever it takes, I'm all in. <laughs> Miracles, signs, and wonders. I want to just pray that you would receive the spirit of wisdom and the spirit of revelation in the knowledge of Christ that you would be able to absorb, glory to God, the fullness of God that you will be able to comprehend with all saints the length, the breadth, the depth, and the height of the love and the power of God, <laughs> and that she might be filled with all of the fullness of God. God, we pray for that. In the name of Jesus, the eyes of our understanding would be enlightened, that we might know the hope of our calling, and the exceeding greatness of the power of God that has been made available to those that believe. <laughs> Whoa, glory to God. And it's according to the same power that he wrought when he raised Jesus from the dead. Hallelujah. That's the power of the Holy Ghost. Mm, yeah, by my shik, I'm all in. <laughs> Whoa, Carolyn Gregory, I'm all in. I'm all in. Dr. Nick, I'm all in. I want you to receive that right now, the spirit of wisdom and revelation. I want you to receive that now. We are deconstructing systems. We're deconstructing traditions. We're deconstructing ideas ideas and presuppositions that have kept us from the power of Pentecost. <laughs> Whoa, glory to God. Mm. Hallelujah. Miracles, signs, and wonders. That's church growth. That's kingdom growth. <laughs> glory to God. Hallelujah. And that was the intentionality of God at Pentecost was for the globalization of the gospel of Jesus Christ. 
You look at all of those nations that were at Pentecost. And you look at all of them. Let's, let's just get that paper Bible. Let's just look at this. Because we are revisiting the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Because there seems to be some concern <laughs> that somehow that tongues is not the initial evidence. And I, I want you to look back at Acts chapter number 2 for just a moment as we revisit the template. And what I want to reiterate is all of us need to go back and visit our new convert process. I just said something to every leader, to every pastor, to every Sunday school teacher, to every Christian ed director. I want you to hear what I just said. We as leaders, senior leadership, apostles, prophets, Evangelists, pastors, and teachers, bishops, elders, and deacons. That's senior leadership. We must sit down around the table and revisit our new convert process. Ooh, I heard Bishop Murphy say the other night, and he gave the salvation prayer, and the Holy Spirit, he turned and he said, Team, We've got to not only invite them to the cross and to Christ, but we must also at the same time introduce them to the baptism with the Holy Spirit. And I know in our process, we, we, we do new members catechism and in our processes, we spend a week or two, the first week or two, on the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And before they get the right end of fellowship, before they go into the waters of baptism, we have already administered the baptism with the Holy Spirit. That's a priority in our church. I mean, after all, we're called the Holy Ghost Cathedral. <laughs> after all. And so I'm asking you now to think about where, where in your process is the baptism with the Holy Spirit? And are your altar workers, are they equipped to administer the baptism with the Holy Spirit at the altar? Are our altar workers equipped to cast out devils? Are our altar workers equipped to heal the sick? Glory to God. Whoa, we must, come on, Barbara Cobb, Andre, we must revisit our new convert process. And I'm speaking to all of us. Hallelujah. I'm saying to you as the spirit of the Lord gives it to me, we must revisit this. And we must put in place what is needful for a person to receive Jesus and the baptism of the Holy Spirit and healing and or a miracle at the time of their introduction to Christ. We must be better equipped. We must talk about it more. Glory to God. Whoa, Shekaba. Are your altar workers baptized in the Holy Spirit? <laughs> are your ushers baptized in the Holy Spirit? You say, well, why the ushers? Why not the ushers? <laughs> They're the first people that people come in contact with? Are they equipped to give the word of knowledge? Are they equipped to give the word of wisdom? Are they equipped in the, in the security and in parking lot? Are they equipped to prophesy? <laughs> Whoa, glory to God. We must revisit. We must revisit it. It should not be random. And we've got to make sure that even the people that, that, that meet the people, that greet the people, are your youth workers baptized in the Holy Ghost? Are your, are your, are your Sunday school teachers baptized in the Holy Spirit? This is vital as we 
come back around 23. This is the time now to retool and to revisit. What are we doing? What shall we do? <laughs> oh, benign she said, pastors, absolutely. Pastors are not baptizing the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Glory to God. No more church like it was before the pandemic. And those of us that have, that will escape, are those of us that will come through it, you better come through it with Pentecost in view. You better come through it with Pentecost on your mind and on your lips. You've got to look at your infrastructure team, your teams, and you've got to say, are, are all of y'all baptized in the Holy Spirit? And then you have to ask the question, are y'all living holy? Are you living a holy life? Are you living a consecrated life to the security, to the parking lot people, to the ushers, the greeters, the office staff? <laughs> no, no, no more can we be random about this. Because somebody may not receive it at the altar. Somebody may receive it in the bathroom. Somebody may receive it on the parking lot. Somebody is coming into the church need a word of knowledge. Have we equipped our teams to flow in the gifts of the Holy Spirit? Oh, come on. Our babies, you got to teach even in children's church. Our babies, are your children equipped to lay hands? Do they know how to pray for the sick? This is the time. The gatekeepers, yes, the gatekeepers is everybody that the people will engage on their way. They touch 11 people on the way to the sea. Are all 11 of them filled with the Holy Ghost? Woo! Shut up. And this is what I want us to, to, to look at. <clears throat> Acts chapter number two, the outpouring of Holy Spirit. And this is still working in our obedience, our obedience to, to, the, to the word of God. Yes, I see you, Mio. all of our bishops. Come on. Yes, all of our overseers, they need to hear this. We've done some good things. But are we doing the right thing? Are we doing the thing needed in this hour? Yeah. Woo, Shekabai. This can't be random. That yeah, we believe in the baptism of the Holy Spirit, but your team is not baptized. Your, your, your leaders, the people that work out, even down to the people that throw the cloths. When people fall and we try to manage a system of decorum and are they baptized? Are they filled with the Holy Ghost? And are they living a holy life? That part. Because you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit doesn't mean you live in a holy life. So I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, but I'm living a holy life. And, and we have to, as leaders, we have to ask that question. We have to ask our leaders. If that's right, see you bet, Paula. She said, this is how I was taught. You can't do anything in the ministry if you didn't have the Holy Ghost. Yes, ma'am. We got to get back to it. Alfred Benyard, our deacons, those that are, that are watching and counting the money, trustees, whatever they're called in your ministry, in your work, are you baptizing the Holy Ghost? Are you living a consecrated life? Are you filled with the Holy Spirit? What does your devotional life look like? Oh, glory to God. Those that fix the communion. Are they filled with the Holy Ghost? Oh, glory, glory, glory. Oh, do they speak in tongues over the elements? Oh, glory, glory, glory. Your elders filled with the Holy Ghost. Do they live a sanctified life? All means all. 
glory, glory, mama shake he ananamashita man. Reba mama mama yo shake the under the machine, the rabaki, the rabaki. Reba mama mama receive the Holy Ghost, the rabasi. Receive ye the Holy Spirit, the rabash, reba mama see. Whoa, why have you rejected him? Why have you dismissed him? Why have you downplayed him like this? Oh, glory, glory, glory. I gave you the power. I gave you the power. Oh, yes, God. We're so sorry. We're so sorry. Whoa, glory. We're so sorry. Oh, God, we thank you. 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 Oh, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. I want you to look at 2 and 13. Acts 2 and 13. Acts 2 and 13. Acts 2 and 13. Hey, mama, near the boshi, mama, kiss so key, mama, bashi. Whoa, glory! Ida da da mama, bashi. Ida da 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 boshi. Whoa, glory, glory. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Verse thirteen of chapter two of Acts, and some, however, made fun of them and said, they have had too much wine. I want to just, I want you to see that. And I want to speak to those of you that have made fun of tongues. Come on, your grace, Bishop Richardson. Wow, glory. Wow, glory, glory. Hallelujah. We got bishops and leaders that don't value and prioritize the baptism with the Holy Spirit. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. And this is how this works when we talk about living a holy, we talk about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Until I got into this seminary context, I didn't realize that there was a division between holiness and Pentecostals. It's just, it's just mind blowing to me. I, I, that's why I tell people you got to go to school. You need to go to school because they're just things you're not aware of. They're just things you don't know. God, His presence is so thick up in here. Whoa, glory! Oh, oh yes, Shabba. Hallelujah. <laughs> Author workers, reading tea leaves, superstition, playing lotteries, reading horoscopes, and all of that stuff. And, and and I'm not against none of that, but you can't work the altar, baby. You can't work the altar and you playing the lottery. You can't work the altar and you are, you gambling in the casino. No, sugar. No, no. You, you're making fun. You're making fun of this. You're saying, in essence, that because, hallelujah, you do what you do and speak in tongues, that that then somehow gives you access. No, baby, no, no. You can play the lottery, you can play the mega ball, you can do all of those things, but you can't work this altar. You can't lead this worship team. You cannot, you, you, you cannot be on this elders' lit ministry. Now, you, you can serve someplace, but you can't serve here. We can't, you certainly cannot teach Sunday school in this church. No, sugar, no, no. You might be going to heaven, but you can't, you can't serve here. You, you got to come out of some things. The baptism of the Holy. I want to read that scripture again, 2 and 13. That some, however, made fun of them and said they have had too much wine. Now, now, now this, this, this is what we face. We face this postmodern theology. This postmodern theological 
culture that says, well, anything is all right. And certainly, I'm not here to talk about whether you're saved or not. But what I want you to understand is that we are in a culture that makes fun of tongues, that makes fun of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Oh, glory to God. Oh, my God. Oh. Oh, God, sometimes I can't get out, folks. I can't get out. Woo, I'm trying to come out of that. Mm. Sabrina Butler, come on in. We are living, Dr. Noreen Davis, we are living in a culture. We are established in the midst of a culture that has a form of godliness but denies the power. A form of godliness, but denies the power. Now, you know, I, I, I get the genres of preaching. I, I get the narratives. I, I get epistles. I get all of that. I, I, I understand prophetic. I, I, I get it. I, 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 I understand hermeneutics. I've taught it, and I, and, I, and I get it. But this is why I believe that many of us have only heard narrative preaching. Narrative, those the stories, beautiful things. Nor, the stories of the scriptures are beautiful. Comedy, romance, <laughs> murder, uh, 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 mystery, uh, intrigue, espionage, they're all in the Bible. But when we start really going back, we don't hear a lot of preaching and or teaching from the book of Acts. Isn't that amazing? And we don't hear a lot of preaching and teaching from the epistles that began to shape, if you will, the first century church. We hear a lot of the narrative stories, but we don't hear a lot of preaching from the book of Acts or from the epistles. A lot of the gospels, a lot of the Old Testament stories. And they're all good. Why? And, 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 and I believe that, that the reason is because we are not in, we are, we, are, we are not paying attention. We're not mindful of how neglected we have made Holy Spirit. Now, this verse just comes in my spirit. I want you to see this. Acts chapter number 2 and 13. Some, however, made fun of them. This is on the day of Pentecost. Pentecostals are fighting over tongues. Holiness people are holiness people because the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the, the evidence for them is not tongues. It's entire sanctification. The Pentecostals initially believed that the baptism with the Holy Spirit initial evidence was what we see in Acts 2, what we see in Acts 10, what we see in Acts 19. That every time there was an outpouring of Holy Spirit, that there, the initial evidence was speaking in tongues. Pentecostals had begun to back up from that. Some had begun to back up from that and began to say that, well, maybe something else is the initial evidence. I grew up in a denomination, the Baptist Church, where they made fun of tongues. This is why I want to raise this up to you. They made fun of tongues. They said, oh, those people are crazy. Or that's just gibber jabberish. Or that, that don't have, that ain't for today. I want to read this verse of scripture again. Acts 2 and 13. Some, however, made fun fun of them and said they have had too much wine. 
What were they making fun of? They were making fun of the initial evidence <coughs> of Holy Spirit. Now, so if you go back to this, and it says that all of them were filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak in other tongues, verse 4 of chapter 2 of Acts, as the Spirit enabled them. Now there were staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation. Now we've been talking about the Gentiles, but let's go back and revisit how Holy Spirit came first to the Jews there on Pentecost. And they were already there in Jerusalem celebrating the, the feast of Pentecost. So there was a great gathering of Jews and proselytes. <clears throat> now watch this. We keep seeing this. Verse 6. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard them speaking in their own language. So what we have done is said, well, they weren't speaking supernaturally. They were speaking in languages of the people. Both are true. Both are true. That Holy Spirit was in operation for the globalization of the gospel. And so Holy Spirit spoke in some of their native languages as well as in what we call unknown tongues. So it doesn't have to be one or the other. We just fight over anything. You know why? Because we don't believe. We don't believe in tongues. And we've been taught not to believe in tongues. I am indigenously Baptist. I'm third generation Baptist in my family. <clears throat> Excuse me. And we were taught not to speak in tongues. We were told they were not for today. The Church of God in Christ, who was started by Charles Harrison Mason, was originally, he was originally a Baptist ordained minister. There in the church in Arkansas, they're still open. And when he went to Azusa, he went as a Trinitarian Baptist preacher. He received the baptism of the Holy Spirit at Azusa under William Seymour, William T. Seymour at Azusa. When he returned back to Arkansas and he began to talk to the Baptist brethren about the initial evidence of speaking in tongues, they became so inflamed with him that they ousted him from their Baptist organization. And he then, being excommunicated, left and with about a hundred or so preachers, he formed the Church of God in Christ. Trinitarian Pentecostals. Not oneness, but Trinitarian because his upbringing was Baptist. All right? So the Church of God in Christ, which is the largest African-American Pentecostal body in the world, over six, seven million people, <clears throat> is basically Baptist people with the Holy Ghost because that's how he formed it. But he knew that the initial evidence was speaking in tongues because he had received it. He had gone to California. He had experienced the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. He had seen the racial, uh, 
a reconciliation and the integration. You're talking about the early 1900s when Jim Crow was, was big and bold and bad. So the church of God in Christ <laughs> is basically Baptist doctrine, but with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And then Mason began to teach on holiness and sanctification. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank God. Emphasis on healing, but not the emphasis on all of the gifts of the Spirit. Okay. Now, the Baptist church that kicked him out, that the, the way we were developed in our thinking is the same way that the Methodists and all of the Trinitarian, the Lutherans, which is odd to me. <laughs> it's odd to me. Methodist, John Wesley, is, odd, is just unbelievable. But no baptism of the Holy Spirit. Now, Here's where I, 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 I have an issue. If you don't understand it, why do you make fun of it? Now, that's what I want you to hear. Ah, oh, <laughs> Now, in some churches, they went to the other extreme, particularly in the oneness, and we'll talk about that later, but how they don't even believe you fully saved. If you haven't received the baptism of the Holy Ghost and spoken tongues. Now, I don't take it to the extent of a salvation issue. But I do believe that it has everything to do with service. It has everything to do with sanctification. <laughs> but but here, here's what I want you to understand. My father, Henry N. Lewis was taught by C.H. Johnson, the pastor of the Greenboro Missionary Baptist Church number two. And, and he mocked the baptism of the Holy Spirit. They made fun of, there were two or three women in our church that had received the fullness of the Spirit. And whenever they were speaking tongues, they would shut them up. And then you could hear them laughing and talking about it and making fun of them. My father was brought up under that. <laughs> and so even when, when the Lord spoke to him and said to start a church and name it Holy Ghost Missionary Baptist Church, my father didn't have a clue what that meant. He didn't believe in tongues. He didn't believe in, 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 in any of that because that was the way he was taught. He went to Detroit Bible College, which eventually became William Tyndale, but he went to the Detroit Bible College and they didn't believe in tongues. Now, it's one thing for you not to believe in tongues, but it's another thing for you to make fun of it. Oh, Shakaba. <laughs> it's, it's another thing for you to make fun it. I want you to read this verse of scripture again. Watch this. Watch this. I, I want you to look at this. It said they heard them speaking in their own language. Are not these men who are speaking Galileans? Verse 7. Verse 8. Then how is it that each of us hears them in our own native language? So there was both the known and the unknown tongues. But Holy Spirit, I was in, I will never forget it, Cambridge, Massachusetts. And I was doing a service, 1983, 84, 85. And I don't remember, but a, a Jewish rabbi, Jewish man came up to me. And he was a professor at MIT. That's all I can remember. And he walked up to me. He said, where did you learn Hebrew? I said, I've never learned Hebrew. He said, you have the most beautiful dialect of the Hebrew language that I've ever heard. And I said, really? He said, yes. And when you speak in Hebrew, I understand the gospel better. 
And I said, sir, I hate to tell you this, but I've never studied Hebrew. And he said, well, you were speaking in the most beautiful articulation of Hebrew that I've ever heard, particularly for a non-Jewish person. He wanted to say a black woman. I knew what he wanted to say. I said, sir, I've never studied Hebrew. I said, but the Holy Ghost knew you were in the room. And he knows the language that you can hear best in. And he's wise enough and smart enough to be able to speak in your language so you can hear it, even though it's not known to me. He said, are you serious? I said, I'm serious. He said, oh my God, can I speak like that? I said, you sure can. And by the end of that revival, that man had received the baptism with the Holy Spirit. I was with R.W. Schambach. And when I was with him for a season, and he would be speaking in tongues, I've seen people, Asian, and different dialects of the Asian culture come to him and say, oh my God, you speak the most beautiful Japanese. You speak the most beautiful Chinese. And he would say, no, I'm speaking in tongues. I've seen the supernatural people. So I don't need to argue as to whether or not it was uh, tongues of the unknown or tongues of the known. Holy Spirit is big enough to speak in both. There were 120 people in the upper room and all of them spoke in tongues. There was no interpretation because this is considered the initial evidence of receiving the baptism with the Holy Spirit. I grew up in a culture that said tongues were not for today. I grew up in a home. My father didn't believe in it. My mother did because she had received years ago back in the woods, but there had been no teaching and no development. But what also has happened in the church is that there are those that make fun of the baptism with the Holy Spirit. I want to read that verse of scripture again. Verse 13, some, however, made fun of them and said they are drunk. They're drunk. So here, here is the, the, the tension, if you will, in the body. Is the initial evidence of the baptism with the Holy Spirit speaking in tongues or not? Oh, glory. Oh, glory. Here by my mind. Oh, glory, glory, glory. Is it or not? And this is the tension. This is the fight, the struggle. Because even those who come into Pentecostal, charismatic, or renewal churches, they come with this doctrine. They've heard their pastors mock tongues. They've heard others make fun of those that are speaking in tongues. They have heard Sunday school lessons against tongues since they were a child. Well, glory to God. We have been raised up in, in, a, in a way that we are resistant to the baptism with the Holy Spirit. We are resistant to signs, wonders, and miracles. We are resistant because we have been socialized and enculturated, if you will, and catechized against tongues. So we want to make the initial evidence something else. We want to make the initial evidence love. We want to make the initial evidence healing. No, 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 no. Is the initial evidence of receiving the baptism with the Holy Spirit proven to us in the text? After you do your textual criticism from whatever variant or whatever manuscript or whatever version you read, is there enough, is there sufficient scriptural evidence that 
in the New Testament, on the day of Pentecost, when Holy Spirit was poured out, and after that, that tongues was not about a debate. Is it the initial evidence or not? Woo, glory, 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 glory. Woo, Shakiba Mamando Reba Bahada Mahada. Oh God, and I'm telling you, some of you have a resistance that's built in. You don't know where you got it from. Maybe your mother, maybe your father, huh? maybe your pastor, someone you love has taught you against it. Huh? And, and not only did they teach you against it, they made fun of it. They mocked it. Huh? Hey, hey, who am I talking to? Oh God, oh God. And so it has made it difficult for you to receive the baptism with the Holy Spirit. And some of you who are in leadership, you've not received the baptism with the Holy Spirit. And so it's impossible for you to teach it and make it and make it a, a, a part of the culture in which you lead if you've not received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And the reason that many of you have not received the baptism of the Holy Spirit is because of this issue of tongues. <laughs> Woo! It's because you have been in places and you have been in schools and you have been in churches and you have been in conversations that speak negatively or make fun of tongues. Woo! Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 I'm talking about the initial evidence of speaking in tongues. There have been those that say, well, there's, you, that you shouldn't speak in tongues unless there's an interpreter. I'd like for you to examine the text of Acts chapter number 2, of Acts chapter number 10, and of Acts chapter number 19. When they all spake with tongues, there was no interpretation. Why? Because it was not the gift of tongues for the body in a message of prophecy or the word of knowledge or the word of wisdom that needed interpretation, but it was the initial evidence of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I'm teaching and y'all ain't shouting. Oh, glory to God. Oh, go. And you have to stand your ground, but you've got to know what you're talking about. And this issue of tongues even now is rising up in the body of Christ where people are going back to the same argument and they are making fun of us. Ooh, Sheba. They are making fun of tongues. They are making fun of the evidence of tongues. They are making fun of the initial evidence. They are bagging away from it. They are moving away from it. Oh, glory to God. But as they move away, I'm moving in. Glory to God. As they're pulling back, I'm going in. Glory to God. Whoa, until I hear, glory to God, that everybody who wants to be baptized in the Holy Spirit with the initial evidence of speaking in tongues has received. I will not. I will not change. Oh, glory to God. I, I said it in my class and I'll say it again. I'm not moving on this. <laughs> you can't move me on this. Well, the initial evidence may not be tongues. What is it? And when did it change? Who got the memo? Who got the letter? After 40 nations of preaching uh, this gospel of the cross, of the upper room in 40 nations, after seeing hundreds baptized in the Holy Spirit in the Methodist church, after seeing hundreds baptized in the Holy Spirit in the Catholic and Episcopal church, after being a part of hundreds of uh, receiving thousands receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit because I ushered them into it. You're now telling me that I need to change. That, th that there's been some new memo that has been released. No, no, I'm not moving on this. You say, well, I believe in God. I believe in Jesus Christ, but I don't speak in tongues. Well, you can. You can. It, it is for all. It is for all. <laughs> the gates of hell should not prevail. Thank you, Dr. Skimmer. Listen, it's for all. You can say, well, I don't believe in it. Okay, and that is your choice. That is your choice. But the initial evidence, 
I hear Pentecostals trying to dilate it. Is it glossioli alley or is it some other tongue or is it known tongues or is it unknown tongue? And does everybody speak in tongues when they receive the Holy Ghost? And the answer is yes. And I've been all the way down to Venezuela. My God. I've been to Colombia. My God. I've been in South America. I've been in North America. I've been on the continent of Africa. I've been in the UK. I've been all over this land. And I've been teaching on the Holy Ghost. And I've been teaching on the baptism with the Holy Spirit. That if you ask him for the Holy Ghost, that he will not hold back from you. Whether you're Baptist, black, white, whether you, whatever you are, whatever denomination, wherever you line up. I have seen the power of the Holy Ghost fall and consistently the initial evidence has been speaking in tongues. Because how else will we know? What is the initial evidence? How will we know? And this is what we see in Acts 2. We saw it in the Gentile as Peter went to Cornelius' house. And then we'll get to this in Acts 19. And throughout the first century church, it was assumed, look at here, that you had repented of your sins, that you had been baptized in water for the remission of your sins, and that you had received the gift of the Holy Ghost. This wasn't a debate. Oh, God. Oh, Sheba. How did it be, oh, she? And I'm telling you now, if you haven't received, do yourself a favor and don't make fun. Don't mock it. Ask Holy Spirit to reveal himself to you. Every person that is listening to me now, you can be filled with the Holy Ghost. You can receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the initial evidence of speaking in tongues. And then the gifts of the Spirit will open to you for the baptism with the Holy Spirit is the gateway to the supernatural. I won't take it back. I won't shut up. I won't change. I will continue to speak this message, teach this message. I will continue if I have to stand against those in the seminary. I've done it before. If I have to stand against those that are in the, the Episcopacy, I've done it before. It bewilders me that you are a Pentecostal bishop and you don't teach the baptism of the Holy Spirit. That bewilders me. Okay. We have got to be more intentional about understanding the significance of the cross, the tomb, and the upper room. We must be more intentional about the significance of the full gospel, the cross of Jesus Christ, where he was crucified, and our sins, our burden of sin, our consequences of sin were dealt with. The tomb, the resurrection of Jesus Christ is a significant element of the gospel of Jesus Christ. But then we must not dismiss the upper room encounter, which is just as significant in the salvation process as the cross and the empty tomb. Have ye received the Holy Ghost since ye believed? I got to go. <laughs> Whoa, glory to God. God, we thank you. Seal this word in our hearts and give us a burning and a fire to see people converted and filled with the Holy Ghost. In Jesus name. I got to go. Woo, listen here. Hashtag. Share this. Everybody that you know. Pastors. Leaders. Deacons. Need to hear this message. Glory to God. <laughs> Woo. Hashtag Pentecost in the pandemic. Hashtag. Glory to God. Uh, Pentecost through a pandemic. Hashtag Bishop Corletta J. Vaughn. Hashtag. And share. Share. Put it on your page. Share it. Glory to God until the old earth is filled with the glory of God. Hey, I love y'all. I got to go. <laughs>